Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk about my July wrap up. I'm going to talk about the books that I read, the books that I'm currently reading, the movies that I saw and series that I saw. I have a documentary as well. So about the books that I read this month. I read only one and it was really a short one. It was from a Brazilian now author, right? Lucas Manente. And the title in Portuguese is Me Encontre ou Encontrei em algum lugar do mundo. So find me anywhere in the world. So Lucas is um, was a flight attendant but with um, in Dubai Airlines. He was, I think he said that he was a flight attendant for about 10 years and he along the years would write some of his memories of uh, travels that he had to make uh, in his notes on his cell phone and he compiled them all and in you know, um, gave birth to a book, Find Me Anywhere in the World. Um, I know Lucas uh, because uh, he has a channel on YouTube, Lucas Manent. He's a Brazilian uh, YouTuber. I became seeing him, seeing his videos like about four years ago maybe or more so he was still a um, flight attendant when I started seeing his videos he would um, make videos about his travels and he would talk about working for Emirates and other things I said Dubai Airlines I meant Emirates I'm sorry um, and he, he wrote this book and he, well, he published uh, this book. It's available, I don't know, I think it's only available on Amazon. In here, in this book, he talks about some layovers that he made. For example, he talks about a layover that he made in India where he got out of his hotel and went in a, some kind of tuk-tuk or something similar to that and went to the streets and he took with him his camera and he went to the market and you know he, he got to a place that he didn't know where he was and he didn't have internet on his cell phone so it would be a really dangerous situation and then some students um, started looking at him in the market and went um, to him and asked why he had a camera with him and he told them that he was a youtuber so he, he was recording um, images for his youtube channel and they invited him to go with them in a um, bus. They, w they were in a, um, a trip, a scholar trip, and he went to the fishermen. So it was a voyage like two hours and a half. So he was becoming worried because further and further, he was uh, being further and further away from his hotel and he knew no one and he was alone so uh, and he talks about the trip there and how you know that people were so warm and so welcoming and how it was a good experience then another story that he tells is about a layover that he, pa he passed in Canada where he met um, 
I think it was in October for the Halloween and um, he met uh, another Brazilian man there he met uh, at a cafe and how he began talking to him and that man invited him to go with him to um, with friends to uh, how do you say it it's like uh, entertainment park I think it was it um, but a uh, spooky entertainment park so they went to a haunted house and how it was hilarious because they were with a friend of that man <laughs> and that friend was so scared that she was crying and she would um, go to the ground crying and screaming and everyone around them would laugh at it um, and how then he through that man he became to know more about the city and I think he was in Toronto I think it was and how um, they would go to some um, hidden restaurants that wasn't so weren't not um, so well known and you know like experiences like that and he I remember that he told another story where he was in the Maurice Islands and he with another flight attendant that invited them the other flight attendant to go swim with dolphins in the ocean and how when he jumped to the ocean he realized that he didn't know how to swim and how he was being dragged by the current and he saw himself far away from the boat and he was trying to uh, get their attention so they would get um, near him and then he got help from another flight attendant that was there and they swam to the boat so experiences like that and how he met his boyfriend that he was also a flight attendant for Emirates and yeah it's it was really sweet it the experience that he had were you know so curious and so exciting and you know a life of a flight attendant according to Lucas is a lifestyle is not just a profession you have to you don't have time for you know like other people you don't have schedules like other people so you have to fly at night you have to fly to the afternoon in the morning so it's it's really well it's not the only profession where this happens but you know a flight a flight attendant has to be prepared for anything at any hour and it's not uh, so you don't have like a stable routine so you know it was really fun to read it it, it was a really fast reading it's really short like 80 pages or something 80 to 90 and I really enjoyed it I really like Lucas so of course that helped and reading his experiences um, and I'm sure that he has so many more that weren't written in his book but you know it was really fun and yeah I'm not I don't think this book is available in English I think it's only available in Portuguese but you know if you are Portuguese or if you speak Portuguese or, or Brazilian or if you speak Portuguese I think this would be a really good uh, read and a really good summer read even so yeah go check it out so uh, the books that I'm currently reading I'm still reading The Idiot by Ilor Dostoevsky I'm not liking it I have to say this is 
I spoke to a person on Instagram and she told me that she really enjoyed this reading and but at the same time that nothing major ap happens in this book that was something that I catch uh, reading this um, and that uh, uh, nothing major will happen this is more focused on characters building character development I mean and yeah well she said it was something that Dostoevsky focuses in his characters not so much in the plot or in the action but still I like characters development but I'm not enjoying the story at all and I'm not identifying with any of the characters so I have to finish it because this is my May book for the 12 books of 12, 12 months challenge so I have to finish it and I'm committed to finishing it but you know then the other book that I'm reading is the uh, Budenbrook by Thomas Mann. I'm still in the beginning of this book. I read like 60 pages um, and I don't know. In the beginning when I read the first 30 pages I wasn't liking it. Um, I was really bored. I heard so many people say so many good things about this book but right now I'm not sure but I have to wait it's so much in the beginning that I have to give it more pages so I can form a more concrete opinion so and the other one that I'm reading is a manga I took the cover off it's Satsuma Kishiden volume 2 I'm in the middle of it and I have to say that I enjoy much more the first volume I adored the story of the first volume I thought it was so interesting and yeah um, because this is about uh, samurai and the um, divisions in society um, in samurai culture um, how they have status in social hier hierarchy and how they are low hierarchy samurai and they are up or up not up uh, high uh, hierarchy samurais and how that sometimes uh, provokes conflict um, and they have some strange traditions that involve death so it's really interesting I'm not so much enjoying this uh, volume 2 the second volume but um, you know I there are there are five volumes at least in my I have a Spanish edition so this is divided in five, five volumes I know that the English edition I think is only three volumes but the story is the same uh, yeah for now I'm a bit eh in the this volume but I'm eager to read the next one so that's the books that I'm currently reading I have others that are on standby so that's why I'm not talking about them here because I mean what's the point if they are uh, on standby it's not readings that I'm officially currently reading right so now about the movies that I saw I saw Persuasion the um, new movie Netflix I think this is from Netflix right let me see 
yeah, it's, uh, it's from Netflix. And I have to say that I read the book by Jane Austen, Persuasion, and I loved the book. It's one, it became one of my favorites from Jane Austen. The story, I think, is so beautiful and it, the book is so subtle. The character construction is so well made. I love Anne and Elliot, the main character. Um, and yeah, the plot of the story in itself, I think it was well thought. It's a romance book, so I love romance, so I'm, you know, suspect about it. But I think the story is so beautiful. I love the book. It was parallel in stature with Pride and Prejudice because Pride and Prejudice till that time was my favorite book from Jane Austen and when I read Persuasion it is tied now so I love the book I love the writing of Jane Austen I think she has so many embellishments she has you know her type of writing is so um, perfect in a way because it has really I'm, I have an expression that I say in Portuguese that is like it has so many Rodriguinhos. It's like it's how can I translate? It has so many little details and the writing is so embellished and so beautiful to read. It's a really beautiful writing. I don't know how to translate. I'm so sorry. But you know, I loved it. And this movie is a bit of a modernization of persuasion. So principally the type of language that they use, it's really current. So it's not so faithful to the type of writing and the type of discourse that Jane Austen would have. So it has some expression like he's a 10 or instead of that long paragraphs of explaining the relationship of Anne with um, how is his name? his name is the love interest of Anne Elliot I don't remember the name right now um, instead of that long paragraphs explaining that relationship or explaining why they don't have a relationship uh, she says that now we're friends it's like type of expressions that we use our days in routine and current discourse and in day-to-day -day discourse so it doesn't have the elaboration of Jane Austen writing so <laughs> I understand in some part why they did it it's like to cap captivate the younger generation but at the same time it's um, a bit of this disrespect for Jane Austen's work and the disrespect for the intelligence of the youth of nowadays, right? I think in a way that's what it is because what they were thinking that people or the younger generation wouldn't understand the discourse of Jane Austen like are we trying to achieve the mediocre like do you do you understand what i mean it's like in some way i understand but in other ways i don't think it was a good idea so what i have to say is it is entertaining she so the director let me see who it is the director is carrie cracknell I don't know her, I don't know any of her work. This is, I suppose, the first movie that I've seen from her. So I can talk about her past work. 
but with this movie the character and Elliot that is the main character she is the um, in a way the our narrator and in the movie she is talking to the camera so she is explaining the behavior of other characters and the history of other characters and she ex is explaining to her her comments about current situations and current events so we have um, her opinion about for example her sisters and her father and we have her comments about her her feelings and her current situation her situation with that with her beloved so it's a different approach i saw the movie persuasion from uh, 2007 and i have to say that i really enjoy that movie i think that you may see this one i'm not saying not watch it it's entertaining at least in my opinion but i would advise you to see that uh, 2007 movie because i think it has much more faithfulness to the, the um, discourse and elaborate discourse from the books of Jane Austen and more respect for the work of Jane Austen so this movie is a bit it was a letdown in a way I'm not saying I laughed with this movie so this is with Dakota Johnson let me see Dakota Johnson, that is our main character, she portrays Anne Elliot. We have Cosmo Jarvis, that portrays the love interest of Anne Elliot. And we have Henry Golding as well. So, I'm not saying that the actors were bad or anything. I'm not saying that they weren't faithful to the plot in itself. But my main objection is about the language that they use so you will have a laugh with this movie i'm not saying the contrary but you know i think it's an oversimplification of so beautiful work and so beautiful writing it's underappreciate appreciative right i'm so sorry if i'm butchering the words but I'm think, I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. And it, this type of oversimplification, I think it's not a good incentive for people to try and, and understand more complex writing. So it's like you have the, um, it's like you want to give the people baby food, you understand? So... I think you have to go to this movie not expecting um, if you write a book I think you'll be disappointed because I think you are expecting those grand um, you know elaboration in discourse of the characters and you are not having that so this is a popcorn movie in my opinion so go to the movie with that in mind if you have if you want to have a good time and you know laugh a bit and have a 1800 story in the mix this is the move for you then i saw good luck to you leo grande this is a movie with emma thompson and Daryl McCormack so this is a movie that only has these two actors and another one but he's she's a secondary character and she appears only at the end of this movie so the main plot is surrounding these two actors so Emma Thompson portrays 
a woman in her 60s that is a widowed, recently widowed, like two years ago or something, and she, she hires a sex worker, a young sex worker, to pass the night with her. And when the movie starts, she's in an hotel room and she's really fidgeted fidgeted like anxious uh, she's drinking some wine or some or champagne I'm, I'm not I don't remember uh, well that's not important but she's you know like uh, moving her legs and really looking to the window drinking and with some anxiousness with her uh, then eventually the man arrives the young man arrives and they start talking she's uh, continuing uh, being really anxious 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 and because is the first time that she's doing something like that and eventually she explains to him that she never had an orgasm and that the husband would almost not even touch her in a way he, he would do his business and that was it would be in the same position the same routine like one minute and it was done so she never and she never had another partner beyond her, her, her husband so she's a sexually prostrated woman and she's now in her 60s and she's trying to experience pleasure and so that's why she hired him but she is so anxious that in the beginning she just wants to talk and he completely completely understands and um, goes with the flow in the conversation but then we we see them in um, I don't know uh, for sure how many encounter encounters they have I think like three or four and we see an evolution in their relationship so it's like they know they know each other really recently right but we see them get through highs and lows in their relationship and some conflict between them you will understand what i mean when you see the movie i think you really should and the conversations that they have about life about she talks about her kids she has two children one girl and one boy they are adults now and she at some point in the conversation with him with leo she says that she thinks her son is so boring so you understand it's really profound conversations well eventually she does something that upsets Leo and they kind of separate like they uh, stop their relationship there but eventually they come back uh, they come to a conversation and things get well again but you know it's it just the scenes are passing in a hotel room so you don't have another scenery so we, and it's just them two talking and I, I thought this movie was so original so captivating and so realist in a way so raw I think this is the type of movie that you really should see it's really worth it and of course it doesn't have action is just a conversation between two people and that's
that's the point of the movie and that's the expectation that you need to have when you go and see this movie it's not comedy it's not humor although it has humorous situations and humorous moments but it's just two people connecting that's what it is so really worth it now about the series that i saw oh no i saw um, i saw half time by jennifer lopez so this is um can i say this is a movie this is documentary or something i don't know the label that i have to give this one but i'm saying this is a movie so this is about i love jennifer lopez she's um one artist that i accompany for many years now many many years and i love her i think she uh what can i say i'm not saying that she is a terrific singer but i'm saying she is a, ter a terrific artist and she is an icon and i think she is a great example uh, of um, the way you should live your live live your life uh, i think she is an inspiration to many and she's a great represent representation for uh, latin people and yeah i love her so i was really curious to see this movie from her and it's about the um, like one year before and a bit after uh, the halftime show that she did for you know I'm not American, I'm Portuguese, so I don't have that... Um, I don't know much about American football, but is that um, show that they do uh, in the interval of the final of American uh, championship, American football championship. Uh, so it's really... Uh, grand in America and also it became uh, grand in other con countries the show in itself and um, I think it was in so it was in 2020 she performed with Shakira and I saw it and I really enjoyed it I think they both were great I will I really love Shakira as well um, and so this is accompanying her through the knowing that she was performing in halftime she was invited to perform then knowing that she was performing with Shakira then the rehearsals the um, construction of the um, vision for the show the different um, uh, elements of her team that work with her for the building of the show the construction of the show uh, the um, choosing of which songs they would put in the show the element uh, and the song that her um, daughter would sing with her and you know so many elements that went and um, made part of the building up to the moment of the show so that was really interesting and you know it's a really if you like Jennifer Lopez I think you will enjoy seeing it I think it's all, always interesting to know the behind the scenes of this type of of performances I really love the music industry so I really love to know um, how they think about the um, ideas and uh, concepts that they want to translate in their performances 
So I think that is always interesting. So if you were curious, go and watch it. Now about the series. So I saw C season two. This is the show with Jason Momoa where it happened a pandemic in the world and people became blind and the generations after uh, would be born blind as well. So this is passing through like 500 years after that pandemic. So this is a postmodern world. This, this is like it happened, a pandemic would happen in the present and now 500 years will pass and we are seeing the society after so many years of that pandemic. And um, this world right now is divided in reigns or realms um, led by different kings or queens uh, and people are being born that can see and people who can see are considered witches and they are um, burned in fires so they are killed because the argument that, that they use is that were sight that destroyed the world so they don't want anyone with that capability but um, we accompany in the first season we accompany a woman that is giving birth and she gives birth to twins a girl and a boy and she is the partner of the character of Jason Momoa but we understand that he is not a father and so she had a previous relationship with someone that we uh, right at the beginning of the series we don't know who it is we j just became to know his name um, and after we understand that, that their children uh, that children can see and so they have they are in a tribe and Jason Momoa is the leader of the army of that tribe and uh, some um, a person in the tribe um, told the queen the servants of the queen the army of the queen that it, the there were uh, a woman there was a woman in their tribe that came by that was with Gerla Morel that's the name of the father of the children and we become to understand that Gerald Morel was wanted because he could see as well and he was being um, look he was being um, persecuted by the army of the queen. We understand that Gerald Morel was a servant in the past was a servant of the queen and she he was her favorite so she was in love with him and now we have that army persecuting that tribe for their their children and we see them running and we see that Gerald Morel um, constructed a path, lead them a path to sanctuary, to a sanctuary place. So they go, they, per, um, they follow his path that he constructed and they arrive to the place where they are now going to live and they stay there for about 18 years and then we see their uh, the, the two um, children, the twins, grown. And along the way we understand that, well, in the beginning 
when they first arrive, we understand that Gerald Morel left a box with books for the children so they would learn to read. And the mother of the children didn't want it for them because she thought that the pursuing of their real father would put them in danger. And she didn't want them to know how to read either. But the father and the, some type of godmother uh, let them go to the box without the mother knowing and so they learn how to read they become uh, reading when they were like 12 and now we see them with 18 reading like books like 1984 and so on so now um, principally the daughter she is um, persistent with the idea that she wants to know her real father, her biological father. And um, again, the same person that betrayed the tribe 18, year, 18 years before be, uh, betrays the tribe 18 years after. And he um gives the information where they are and the army of the queen go goes there and so they have to run again and so it becomes the mother the mother the father the two the twins the godmother and a member of the army of the tribe and they become running and the idea is to find the path to Gerald Morel. And so they go uh, and vote because the mother and the father didn't want them to find their biological father. They thought it would put them in danger. But the daughter and the son and the godmother really were... Um, for the idea of finding their biological father. And so they vote and the twins win. And so it begins the journey of finding Gerald Morel. And so in season two, we, well, it happened something at the end of season one that we continue to follow in season two. I'm not going to say what it is because it will be a spoiler so I don't know I can I really can't say anything about season two for, to be honest but you know situations situations uh, change um, some opinions about people and the intentions of people change and we have, well, I can't say anything more. I'm sorry. Uh, but you know, you have an idea of what this series is about. I can say this is really intriguing and really exciting to watch. I really love this type of series. I thought the concept was really well constructed and well thought. Of course, I think that some scenes and some conceptualization of the society that is now blind is a, a bit unrealistic, but you know, it's a series, it's not reality, so it's for you to be entertained. And if it's, you have to suspend your belief. And it's really entertaining and I love Jason Momoa, so I really love watching him in his role. I love all the actors that participate in this series. And it's packed with action and with twists and um, what you thought about the character, you go and find that it, it was not true. 
So it's really exciting and I really love the second season. Season 3 is going to come out this August, I think at the end of the month, day 20 something. So I'm really excited to uh, go and watch it. And yeah, I advise, if you were intrigued by what I said about the plot of C, go and watch it. It's on Apple TV. Then I saw a documentary, Mormon No More. So this is about a couple, a lesbian couple, that um, had, they were uh, Mormon. Uh, one of them was born in a Mormon family and the other one was uh, converted, right? That's how we say it, I think, to the Mormon religion. They had both a family with men, they had children, and at some point in their life, they realized that they were attracted to each other. And so they decided to left their family, their husbands, not their families, their husbands, and construct a life together. And this is all about how they also left the Mormon religion, Mormonism, right? And they, how they built a life together and now they live together with their seven children because one has four children and I think the other has three, three. Um, and yeah and how they are more and more happy now together and they they have a podcast where they talk with um, other LGBTQNA plus um, people mostly or principally that are in Mormonism uh, like they were and they talked about um, some uh, young men that are in that are Mormon but they are also homosexuals um, or lesbians and uh, or bi and uh, the experiences that they had inside the religion with other people from their religion some things that were said some things that were taught um, we accompany a company well we uh, see um, a man a young man talking about how he would feel attracted by other men and he by Mormonism that wouldn't be allowed and he wanted to be a good Mormon and he wanted to build and have a family and have a family with a woman and how he went to have um, lessons in uh, some type of conversion pro program with another uh, man that would say to them that he also had feelings for other men and he got over it and he now was a mentor to them and eventually that same man came out and abandoned his wife so you know these type of stories and also a story about a young man that committed suicide because he was feeling attracted to other men but he he wasn't able to conciliate being attracted to other men and being Mormon and how he was an, ex an inspiration to another young man that in a um, public I think it was end of the year um, festivity where they gather students and uh, the, um, the better student talks to 
in the in a stage talks to the public and he assumed in public in that event that he was gay and how the happening of that suicide of that other young man was an inspiration so they talk about also uh, returning to the main couple the lesbian ma main couple uh, we accompany their relationships with their families and how the one 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 of the per, one person of the couple was christian and she has a christian family and how they weren't able to watch the their getting married when she was mormon so when she married with her first husband um we accompany um, the other uh, person in the couple, the other woman um, that has a family that is Mormon and how they, um, I think they are five, I think she has four brothers and sisters, so they are five in all. I think that's how it is and um, the mother so the mother of um, that woman I don't remember their, na their names I'm so sorry um, is talking how four of, the, of their children got out of Mormonism and how she feels that she failed as a mother and how the couple conciliate not being Mormon anymore and still wanting to uh, be part of the family and we see eventually uh, the mother and father of that woman leaving the religion as well so it is um, Oh, we also accompany uh, a young man who is an activist in his city, Utah, and how they have a university there, BCU, I think, not so sure. Um, that is a Mormon university for Mormon students, and how they have, um, they light, I think, I think it's oh uh, I think it's a Y in a mountain and how they went and lighted the the letter excuse me with LGBTQ plus A plus uh, lights colors I mean um, and how they are trying to uh, be the next generation of Mormon people and Mormon mentality and how they want to be more inclusive and um, trying to change the perspective of their religion so you know it's an um, interesting um, documentary that um, I advise you to watch it also talks about the relationships that the main couple has with their ex-husbands one of the one of them was you know of course hurt but it still maintains a good relationship with his ex-wife and of course maintains a relationship with their children and the other one uh, was not so was not so understanding of the living of his wife and he didn't see them as a family but you know their their relationship um, gets better but you know it's all about it and how sometimes you being who you are it's not accept, uh, acceptable and how that is said 
So it's really a um, documentary for you to watch. I think it's really interesting and I really enjoyed seeing it. It was really eye-opening. I don't know so much about Mormon, Mormon religion. So it was, uh, well, an ed educating documentary. So go watch it. And yeah, that's it. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, hey, it helps a lot to the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a video to do or anything else. And that's it, I hope you have enjoyed it.